He's angry about mortgages. It's Angry Mortgage. He's swearing. He's cursing loud. He's old. He's opinionated. And he's been doing this so damn long. This program is about mortgages, and this is mortgage advice, but the advice may not apply to your situation. Contact licensed mortgage professionals for specific recommendations before you make decisions about mortgages. You may not agree with Ron, but if you don't, uh, he thinks you're wrong. Oh, and did we say there is a lot of swearing? We're back. We're on We're the back. air. It's the, uh, it's, it's like the week. I think of, I always think of things in terms of, um, the Bank of Canada meeting. So the Bank mm -hmm. of Canada meeting is the 24th, which is this week. Mm -hmm. uh, I think it's tomorrow. Yes, yeah, tomorrow. Um, so yeah, it's just one. It's the call it that. Everybody who wants these things date stamp. Fuck you. It's uh it's a, that, that's how you <laughs> figure it out, bitches. Okay, like uh, yeah, it's the Bank of Canada 24th. That's tomorrow. Mm -hmm. So big busy week. Fucking freezing, right? It's like, so cold. It is just. <laughs> I mean, I'm complaining, <clears throat> excuse me, as if we even had much of a winter, to be honest with you. So, <laughs> yeah, but no, I mean, no matter what, you know, like when you're above zero mm -hmm. and then you jump to 12 below, it takes your body a minute to get used to it for sure. Fucking tough. Yeah. It's tough. I mean, it's you just freezing out there. Just, you, there's this instinct <laughs> just to hide in your house for the yeah. first couple of weeks, right? It's mm -hmm. just. Takes a while to get used to the idea. It's so goddamn cold in there. Hey, <laughs> the guys in Vancouver are freezing their balls. Okay, like it's <laughs> it's never minus ten in Vancouver. Yeah, yeah. Never, like yeah, yeah. never. Okay, so minus ten in Vancouver, basically the world comes to an end. Okay? Oh no! Like yeah. <laughs> but I give them props. Like, I was talking to a guy from Vancouver just last night. I give him props. <laughs> I said, look, uh, in Toronto, if it rains for like a full day, like it starts raining in the morning and it's still raining at night. Basically, the world comes to an end too. Like all the traffic goes to rat shit. Oh okay? my god! People forget how to drive. People forget it how rains. to drive in the rain. Like yeah. uh, in Vancouver, if you forget how to drive in the rain, you're dead. Okay, because it's <laughs> raining every fucking day. Sometimes oh, no. it'll rain for forty straight days for Christ's sake. So, you know, so, but that's the difference in places, right? Mm -hmm. Like we we sort of we, we're I'm scared of the cold now that I'm old. Okay, but I'm like. <laughs> But I think everybody doesn't like it. Like, yeah, it takes a little while to get used to it. Yeah, I always tell people I'm not built for this weather. <laughs> I am sure as fuck not a skier or snowboarder either. So oh. I'm like, oh, let's get that fucking clear. Okay, like, I'm not. <laughs> That's this... the only thing that makes winter tolerable for me is yeah. the sports. Okay, fair. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not doing any fucking sports. All right, <laughs> what's going on in Canada this week? What's going on in mortgage world, real estate world? Now, the first thing I got to get after is. I got pissed off this week, mm. and it is angry mortgage after all, okay? Yep. I got pissed off this week. I'm reading all these different things about the government and mm. different things. Like, first of all, here it turns out the government got a report two years ago. They got a report two years ago. They did this big report in the finance department, housing department, in the federal government, and they said, oh, yeah, we think that if you have huge increases of immigration... We think there's nowhere near enough housing to keep up. Mm, okay, so basically the report said no shit. No, no, <laughs> the report's from two years ago, okay? So it's like, hey, we think this is what's going to happen, and I guess everybody else in the government said, okay, who gives a fuck, okay? Like, uh, uh, like we... You, they you always think, wait till it's too late to actually... Thank you. See, that, like, oh, okay, well, shit, now we're here. Thank you, <laughs> thank you, like... What the f okay, that's not this is not really a what the fuck, but like what's wrong with the government that it takes so fucking long mm. to see the obvious. Mm. Okay. Like the signs it, were there. <laughs> no shit. Okay. Like like the the like just the houses are batshit crazy. Price mm -hmm. of houses batshit crazy. Mm -hmm. So let's see what would happen if we bring in a million two people a year. One point two million people a year. Yeah. What will happen? Well, we have this report here from two years ago said it's you're fucked. Okay, yeah. uh, we can't possibly keep it. No, okay, so that's two years ago. And and here's the wild part. <clears throat> After this fucking months and months of this hellacious, well, let, then it circles back to the international students, right? Mm -hmm. So. Oh, uh, there's a lot of international students. Um, federal government doesn't completely control international students. Like in yeah. other words, in the province, if they issue an approval for somebody to come in to for somebody to come from another country to go to the university or college, mm -hmm. 
uh, then okay, they they let him in. That's mm-hmm. it. That's that's the setup. And they're okay? not obligated to fix any housing. It's just like well, figure it out. <laughs> yeah, I mean, but like. It's, you know, so the federal government says it's the province's fault. The province says, "Oh, I don't know. Why weren't this never like it's just?" But here's the crazy part: mm. we've been watching this complete shit show yeah. with the international students for mm-hmm. going on a year, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, with the poor, and I feel sorry for these guys. Like, like they're sleeping in a basement in Brampton. Like they got. 12 futons, cots. cots yeah. Food, uh, maybe not even cot. Maybe it was a futon. I saw a story. This guy rented half a mattress. Half a mattress. <laughs> not sure if that really like, worked. I'm not sure if that was an honest story, but I, mean, like, I saw it too. I yeah, it. yeah. But here's knows, the deal. But... Like, it's been months and months and months. Mm-hmm. Okay. This week, this last week that just mm-hmm. passed, the immigration minister says, well, maybe we should tie it to housing. Oh my gosh. Holy it's shit. It's like they're playing a game of connect the dots. Oh. <laughs> it's just wild. Like like so and that's my my whole thing is Oh, we got uh, you know, lower housing starts constantly. So you see me she says, "Yeah, there's going to be 7% less housing starts." Well, what's with your fucking housing accelerator fund if it's decelerating, okay? Mm-hmm. Like but why does it take so fucking long to see the obvious, okay? Yeah. Like, 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 seriously, like, I mean, it, it, you know, it's, by the way, I respect the fact that these are big, big departments. There's thousands and thousands and thousands of people working there. Mm-hmm. But when you hear the people screaming about crazy town, okay, mm-hmm. like 800,000 international students, I mean, holy shit. Yeah. Just in Ontario, it went from 111 to 480, like in two years, like what, three years, sorry, what? Mm-hmm. This unmanageable, crazy town. Okay. Yeah. So when people start to talk about it, like when everybody was talking about it, like last year, um, summertime, you know, because the that huge growth in the spring of last yeah. year mm-hmm. in 2023, huge numbers of people coming in. Well, can't the government think about it over the summer? Do they have to wait till the next fucking year? Mm-hmm. Does everything take fucking years to think about? <laughs> it in seems government? like a. <laughs> so fucked up drives me fucking nuts okay like like how long does it take to make a change just yeah. you get some of this stuff like some of it's hard don't get me wrong of it's course. hard some of it's hard but some of it's not hard yeah you know it's like um just make a policy change and it changes how do they change things like oh you have to have more money when you come in mm-hmm. okay but that's still a whole different semester like they said the students you need to bring in a lot more money yeah well, yeah but you already committed to this whole semester already right. so so it applies to the next group of people like, or or will they just get some more money mm-hmm. right or will mm-hmm. they just pretend to have some more money like i don't i don't fucking know but i'm just yeah. saying that Ah, oh, so long everything takes so fucking long and i get it it's big should be nimble but here's the crazy part mm. some things they're really fucking good at like when they wanted to give, when they wanted to give out CERB, I mean, the money just showed up, right? Yeah, just appeared in your account. Like yeah. <laughs> well, that, that took like five weeks. I'm not mad at them about CERB. I'm not. I don't know. A lot of people are mad. Some people shouldn't have got it, but it's it, fine. They're cracking down on the people who shouldn't have gotten it. And it was a fucking emergency, right? Yeah, COVID was an emergency, but like people it's, need to live. It's incredible how if they actually like some things like cutting checks, they're really fucking good at. You're like. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, we need an Arrive Can app. Let me give you a $58 million. See what you can do. I mean, like, so spending money, they're so very fucking good at. Yeah. I don't understand. Like, this is policy stuff. Like, if it's clear that we're abusing these international students, mm-hmm. and if it's clear that there's so many new people coming in that it's mm-hmm. applying incredible pressure mm-hmm. on rents, because everybody's rents through the fucking roof, yeah. right? Yeah. So we see it. We see it statistically every month. Rents higher, higher, mm-hmm. higher, higher. Come on, like you can just make a decision. Like it's it shouldn't happen. But it's obvious. That's why it's gonna take them a couple months, years to figure it out. Sweet Jesus, <laughs> it shouldn't take so long mm. to make a fucking decision in the government. It's just no. fucking stupid. All right, what else is going on? Rates went up. Yeah. So like I know this is gonna be like a social media. Everyone's gonna be like, Ron, you were Ron, wrong. You were fucking wrong. All right, right. All right. So the crazy part is I'm. I'm actually not wrong, okay? <laughs> That's what every fat fuck says when he might be wrong. But anyway, the, uh, I, I, I think I'm not wrong. Here's why. Uh, rates will continue to go down. But I said, they're going up this week, but I said, 
when it started going down, and it has gone down yeah. from November to now, uh, mm-hmm. it's down about one one percent to one and a quarter percent overall mm-hmm. on rates on all fixed rate. By the way, every now it's, it's fixed rates because obviously mm-hmm. variable and HELOCs and prime is different, but yep. fixed rates down. It has come down a lot, mm-hmm. but it bumped back up again because I said, oh, I think I said it maybe. 30 times, yeah. okay, <laughs> that it wasn't linear. In yes. other words, yeah. it's not just straight down, straight up. No. There's bumps. Like it goes, it's bumpy. Mm-hmm. Like, okay, it's going down, it's going down, up. It's mm-hmm. going down, going down, up. Okay, mm-hmm. so, and but if the trend is down. So we're up this week. So mm-hmm. why are we up? Okay. Um, bore the shit out of everybody again. Bond yields are up. Everybody's yeah. so out there's going, oh, him with the fucking bond yields again. Jesus. Mm-hmm. Anyway. That's how it is. That's how it is. <laughs> Canada bond yields up. Why are they up? Uh, lousy inflation print last week. Inflation yeah. report comes out. Oh, it's not going down. It went up a tiny, tiny bit. It went up. Uh, so now, why though? Like, why does this happen? Why? What's the whole story? It's it's just simple. Canada bond yields are bond traders mm-hmm. trying to figure out where's the bonds going to be in the future because if you're, if you're talking about a five-year bond you're actually projecting into the future right mm-hmm. you got to figure out where is everything going to lay in, in five years over the five years that's how they're trying to price it over mm-hmm. the future of rates over five years yeah okay so if you're doing that you've got to say well there was a chance that we'd get a bank of canada cut sooner i never thought so mm-hmm. okay but then when you see lousy inflation numbers, and lousy means up or mm-hmm. not, no longer going straight down, when you see those lousy numbers, you think, well, that's going to push cuts out yeah. into the future, yeah. farther away. And you just make the adjustments in the bond trading to accommodate that. Yeah. Okay. All right. So that's what happened. But that doesn't mean that it's not going to keep going down. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's going to go down. It's going to fluctuate. Mean, but it's gonna it's gonna be bumpy. It's gonna go mm-hmm. up, down, up, down, up, down. So finally, but the trend is down. I know mm-hmm. a, a guy I know, smart guy, Rob McClister. He ran out like six charts to demonstrate all this. Mm-hmm. I, I was getting dizzy looking at these charts. I, mean, <laughs> I, I, I like a good chart, like anybody else, but I'm not as really chart crazy as some people are. Mm-hmm. Okay, mm-hmm. not saying Rob's chart crazy. He's good. Not saying Ben Rabideau, Ben, you know you love your charts, okay? Not saying these guys don't love charts, but um, I'm, I'm I'm sort of more of just a mm-hmm. think about it, talk about it kind of guy. Yeah, okay. Fair. So, yeah, it's going to bounce around. It's not going to be linear. It's not going to be straight down. It's not going to be straight up. That said, all you people out in social media world, yeah, you're wrong, you fat fuck, you're fucking wrong. Okay, all right, that guy, yeah. Well, I, I. I not really wrong because they said it was linear. Ah, fuck your linear. <laughs> fuck you. You're wrong. Ha ha. Rates going to the moon. Ha ha. Rates are going back up. They're going to go way up. Uh, no, they're not. <laughs> shut up. Ha ha. I was right for two weeks. Oh, you shut up now. They'll shut up in two weeks. <laughs> oh, my. No, they never shut up. They just disappear for a while and return. Okay? Yeah. That's all that happens. They just sort of, they, 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 and by the way, here's one truth of social media. Mm-hmm. The truest truth of social media. Nobody ever says they were wrong. Oh, <laughs> like not ever, ever. not never, never, ever, never, ever. ever okay. Never. <laughs> As a matter of fact, when they're proven to be wrong, sometimes you call them out. Sometimes you call a guy out on being wrong. Hey, look, you were wrong. You said this. I said that. Mm-hmm. Oh, you misunderstood me. Yeah. <laughs> like, why, why is it impossible? <laughs> you deflect it to another thing, and then yeah. <laughs> me, I am wrong so often. For fuck's sakes, I'm. Uh, everybody's wrong. Yeah. If you, if you, <laughs> Like if, if like obviously folks, if I was right about every fucking thing, would I be doing this podcast? No. no. I'd be would I be in this fucking Toronto? It's minus sixteen for fuck's sake. No. I'd be on my I'd be like that Branson guy on my own island in the Caribbean, you know, like I'm the king of a fucking little butler country for fuck's sake. All right. Like Ron the mortgage Ron Ron turns so, switches from Ron mortgage guy to Ron roasting his nuts guy. Okay. That's Ron it. Island guy. Uh, Ron Island guy, yeah. Like, you don't want to see those pictures. You don't want Ron in a speedo. Huh. Ron in the Speedo, like, there's about six people just sort of threw up in their mouth right now. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. 
turning it down because they're listening right. to it with kids in the car. I'm going to switch this thing. Hey, nobody should listen to this fucking podcast with kids in your car, folks. Okay? Like, get clear on that. This is like an earbuds kind of a thing. Yeah, 100%. All, yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. It's an all-alone thing. I mean, yeah. Like, or adults only or whatever mm-hmm. you want. 19 plus, whatever. Do I make the show seem X-rated? Because like, no. No, it should, it's not really X-rated. No, okay, no. But it's, they're swearing. We it's know a different swearing. category. It's a different, whole different category. <laughs> Yeah. So now, I mean, like, seriously, I mean, I'm, we're, we're all going to be wrong. But mm-hmm. the, the really silly part is I'm not wrong. <laughs> Rates are down. Mm-hmm. They are significantly down from November. They are not going all the way back up mm-hmm. to November. I just heard. Oh, well, wait, I just let, let, let's pull up my phone. There's a comment right now. No, you're fucking stupid. It's going up. All right, fine. But no, it's it's not going back up that much. <laughs> yeah. It's going up a little. Then it'll keep coming down again. Yeah. All right. That's just. But it's up. It's going to be up this week. Uh, well, how much? It's going to be up about 25 basis points. So if we, we were able to do like a 469, uh, four, sorry, 464, mm-hmm. high ratio, five-year fixed, probably going up to 489. We had a bunch of conventional five-year. That's the mortgage. Remember, high ratios, the CMHC mortgage. It's for special situations, purchases only. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then we got uh, stuff for purchases over a million, refinance, all the rest of it. Uh, that's con- called a conventional mortgage, and that was dropping as much as 489, 484 on a five year, and now mm-hmm. it's probably back up to 504, 509, something like that. But uh, check the website, that's all I can tell you. Mm-hmm. Uh, anyway, it'll come back down again. Yeah. So yeah. sum it up, it'll come back down again. For sure. So, huh, so I said about the Bank of Canada announcement. Mm-hmm. So now. I'm going to make the Bank of Canada announcement right now. You're going to make Tiff jealous. <laughs> no, you're wrong. You fat <laughs> fuck. You do not. You, I'm never jealous of you. You fat <laughs> bastard. But anyway, I'm going to make my friend Tiff's. I'm going to make his. He, so nobody has to listen to him tomorrow. I don't know. If it's, <laughs> I don't know if it's a press conference or whatever. But I'm going to make the announcement for him. The announcement is. Fuck all, nothing happens. Okay. okay. Neither up, down, mm-hmm. stay the same. There's lots of people. You are not making my announcement for me, <laughs> you son of a bitch. <laughs> yes, I just did, Tiff. Sorry. I just made your announcement for you. That's it. It's over. You don't even have to show up if you don't want to. <laughs> Roll out some bullshit press Just release. Post the link yeah. to this podcast yeah, instead. That's it. That's it. Ah, listen, Tiff. Listen. Hey, you media guys, Bank of Canada, you comms people, listen. She had the right move. Just post this link. No more Tiff. <laughs> Just post the link to the voice, okay? That's it. No, there will be no change. <laughs> yeah, you know, the crazy part is he doesn't sound like that at all. No, he doesn't. <laughs> He just looks like he would sound like that. <laughs> <laughs> he looks like he would sound like that. Uh, he's, the comms people are even madder now. <laughs> what did you, used to be the fat fuck was all over Tiff. Now the woman's going crazy on him. <laughs> Jesus. Is a, it's the influence anyway. of working here. What can I say? It's the virus. Let me tell you. Uh, yeah, no. So no, there's no bank account of change. Anybody who thinks there, I, I don't even know if people thought there would be. I don't think anybody really thought there would be, but yeah, no change. I'm announcing it. Uh, Tiff, you can sleep in tomorrow. Nothing <laughs> to say. Is it, I hate you, you fat bastard. Anyway, <laughs> sorry, Tiff. It's over. Uh, so something interesting came up. You know, we talked it months ago, mm-hmm. a couple months ago, we talked about this guy in Victoria, Greg Martell. Uh, mortgage broker over there was just running a complete fucking scam okay mm-hmm. looks like he ran off with like i don't know 200 million bucks like stole all the investors money from private mortgages oh, my yeah yeah it's greg martell mm-hmm. i always tell a story about greg martell that i met him uh, I, I i've known greg i knew greg mm-hmm. okay i mm-hmm. met him we were at a meeting once uh and i sat down and talked to him for a while and i came away from it thinking oh well, that's a it's a good looking man, you know, big rangy guy, good looking mm-hmm. guy. Spoke spoke well, but I thought, you know, every word out of his mouth is bullshit. <laughs> okay. Like every fucking word was bullshit. But anyway. Yeah. He gathered up a bunch of money, private investment, uh, but then he of course Yeah. The trouble is with people when they when you're some people are just evil and when mm-hmm. they realize people trust them. Mm-hmm. They make a shift like Greg was doing private mortgages and then he invented a new line of bullshit when he was doing note loans. Mm. So he's doing note loans for so private mortgages. 
you have to run them through some sort of a lawyer, typically, right? right? But once you tell your your people who believe in you, and he had worked in the business for years, mm -hmm. uh, once they believe in you, they'll just, and you say, oh, we're switching to note loans now, you'll make more money. Okay, like I made money before, so I guess mm -hmm. I'll keep making money. Uh, and of course, that was just sheer fuckery, and uh, he stole all the money. Wow. Um, he was like, there, there were signs, you know, Greg was doing, uh, he opened up like, uh, uh, a daily sort of online Porsche rental crazy shit in Huntington Beach, California. Like he left Victoria, moved down there and, mm. and they're doing luxury, this luxury, that, you know, <laughs> just, uh, anyway. all those influencers renting out cars for the day for their videos. Very much like that. <laughs> yes. Very much like that. Big uh, fucking like the, then the car thing went for rat shit. Then they got chased out of his uh, house, got foreclosed on in uh, California. Mm -hmm. All hell was breaking loose. And, now we think uh, Greg's in Thailand. Okay, we oh. can't. Nobody can find Greg anymore. Greg is gone. He's just <laughs> yeah. fucking gone. Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. Greg's in Thailand. So we had another very recent, like just last year, early just recent. I'm only just finding out about it. I, I unfortunately I can't use the guy's name because I used a name of of a particular fucker a few uh, months back mm -hmm. and. Uh, Got a letter from his lawyer that was expensive. Uh, fuck, you know. So you got to be a little careful. I can say anything I want about Greg Martell because he's run away to Thailand. <laughs> he's not going to come after you. <laughs> well, well, he's well published. He took the money and yeah. nobody can find him and he's in <laughs> Thailand. Okay. So, uh, but this other guy, Kitchener Waterloo guy, longtime mortgage broker, starts doing private lending. I guess he was doing it over the years, bits and pieces, then he expanded it. Mm. And now. Guy told me that he's got like a six million dollar judgment against him. He's going bankrupt. Like the money's gone. Oh like, shit! Yeah, shit. Shit is right. So, <laughs> here's my message on this subject. Okay, the message about private mortgages is this: you can invest in private mortgages. Like my like my organization. I me personally I've been doing private mortgages for twenty seven years, mm -hmm. no longer. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um. You just have to be careful oh, yeah. and you have to have a driving philosophy that you can't go, you can't be lending like 90% loan to value on a property. You got to use proper appraisers. You got to yeah. be, you got to cut, you got to use fewer seconds, far fewer seconds. Like I only believe you do see my idea about second mortgages, just for everybody out there listening. Second mortgage is there's a first mortgage with a bank. Mm -hmm. People need some money, can't get it anywhere else because of some credit issues, income verification issues, whatever. And they say, I really need some money to give you a second mortgage. And that's mm -hmm. going to be behind the bank. So the bank's the priority. Mm -hmm. If anything goes wrong, the bank is paid. Mm -hmm. Good luck with the second mortgage guy. Now, if there's yeah. enough equity, if there's huge equity, like if there's Let's say the house is worth a million. The bank mortgage is four hundred thousand. Only needs another hundred. Mm -hmm. Well, that's just still half a million of mortgages yeah. against a million dollar house. Even if the market goes to rat shit, yeah, should still be okay. I mean, yeah. if they don't pay, you hire a lawyer, power sale them out. Yeah, get your money or call it a day. Mm -hmm. But if you get too aggressive, or you don't use the right appraisers, or you start going into the world of sheer lunacy mm -hmm. and asking a few local real estate agents what they think it's worth and all this shit. Like mm -hmm. if you do, if you just don't follow tried and true methods. Mm -hmm. All right, so how do you, what, when should you worry about private lending? Let me tell you, you worry about private lending when the private lender is a mortgage broker who just became a private running a mech okay that that's a little worrisome okay because i would like to see people with banking backgrounds mm -hmm. opening mix right that'd be my preference yeah. like somebody who's like a deep history of doing alternative lending at a financial institution mm -hmm. people who got great ideas of governance people who got great ideas of obeying carefully obeying their prospectus their you know the, the set of guidelines they set up to do the lending mm -hmm. so Folks, if you're being asked to, oh, and preferably old people have been doing the private lending for a long time, so they got a good yeah. track record. Of course. Like there's this bunch of guys a couple of years ago just started up online. Mm -hmm. Like they started soliciting investment online and doing mortgage, like doing private mortgages online. Mm -hmm. And I'm not sure if any of the fuckers involved had any banking background at all or any lending background. So, I mean. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. So it's 
look into it. Look don't, into it. Don't just go at the first guy. You just see. look into <laughs> it. Just uh, you see some advertising. You say, "Oh, mm-hmm. that's good. I'm going to get. I'm going to get eleven percent, twelve percent. That's very good. I should think about that. Maybe you should not think about that. Okay. <laughs> I mean, you got to. Ch- it's about the people who are deciding on the mortgages. Yeah. Okay. It's about yeah. if you're taking their word for it. You got to make. Sure, it's hard to know if they're telling the truth. Yeah. If they got a long track record. A little bit different. A little bit of okay. research could save you a long, long oh, journey. You, you don't, you don't want to lose your money. <laughs> no, right? you know that's the main thing. At least I think everybody knows when they put money in the stock market, things could go haywire. Mm-hmm. Like you, you know, everybody knows stock prices go yeah. up, go down. Yeah, yeah. Um, sometimes volatile ups and downs. Okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, sometimes people assume houses is turtle totally safe, and yeah, better than some things, but. Mm-hmm. House mortgages, you got. There's a lot of things to know about it too. You got to be careful. You got to have experience. You got to do everything right. You got to check the check boxes and make sure you've done. Cross everything. your T's, dot your I's, oh, do your due diligence. It's gotta happen. So yeah. you got those people need to be experienced and knowledgeable and everything else. Mm-hmm. So we have got our. Uh, we got the. Uh, Answer bag? Well, I don't know where I got that. Sort of a mail bag, like, but we give the answers. Is it an answer bag? I don't know. Let's. let's we got viewer mail. Thank we you. Go with it. Thank you, viewer mail. <laughs> we got the questions. I, I, and I'm happy to answer them. All right. Mm-hmm. Uh, we need to put. Uh, we had to put mom in a care home. Dad. Whoa, you had to put her in there? Like against her will? I mean, I don't know. What the fuck? Wow. Hopefully not. Hopefully not, yeah. <laughs> Dad passed away. <clears throat> I have power of attorney. We want to remortgage and get money out of ba- out of the house, but the bank says no. All right. So what I'm <laughs> guessing here is the question is about, um, like, sadly, dad passes away, and then mm-hmm. mom, for some reason, has to Being has to home. get permanent care. And mm-hmm. obviously, if you've got a power of attorney, the way <laughs> it should be done is that it's obvious to lawyers, it's obvious to people. Um, who are responsible for this stuff that mom can't make her decisions anymore mm-hmm. and therefore you got a power of attorney so that financial decisions could be made on her behalf. Mm-hmm. So we have a case here where the person has power of attorney over all of mom's affairs. Mom's the person who owns the house, mm-hmm. but we have power of attorney and people with the power of attorney, typically a child of the mm-hmm. of the person, mm-hmm. says, well, I got, I, I've got to do stuff. I got, you know, we got to fix the house up. We maybe want to sell it. We got some deferred maintenance. The roof's got a hole in it. I need to raise money, look mm-hmm. after the house. Mm-hmm. Hey, go to the bank. Hey, can I get some money out of the mortgage? Can I do a second mortgage? Can I do something? Can I get a line of credit so I can do these house repairs? Mm-hmm. And the bank says, the bank says, okay, produce a power of attorney. And the bank says, no. Mm-hmm. So why is the bank saying no? Let me tell you why. Because, because I've, I've been around. Okay, I'm like that Indiana Jones movie. Mm-hmm. I mean, you ever, you ever seen the Indiana Jones movies? Some of them. Not all of them, right? No, like, no. So. so when I was younger, like every living human being saw the, uh, <laughs> like when Indiana Jones, the first one came out, every human alive saw it. Okay, <laughs> I think so. People in like Mongolia were saying Indiana Jones stuff. But anyway, uh, he used to say it's, uh, it's, Indiana Jones said it's it's not just age, it's mileage. Okay, mm-hmm. so I got both here. Uh, so I've been around this stuff and here's what happens <clears throat> so somebody has three kids and somehow only one of the kids has the power of attorney mm-hmm. okay so the kid with the power of attorney starts taking money out of mom's account taking boring money against the house mm-hmm. with the power of attorney and then sadly mom passes mm-hmm. okay but then there's a will and the will says okay well, I'm going to split it up between <clears throat> all three of my kids okay but the two remaining kids who didn't have control of the money yeah. come to notice all the money's fucking gone, okay? Yep. Like they took all the money, the one of the power of attorney <laughs> took all the money and he, he merged the house up to the ass and there's no more money left in the house. and Left you with nothing. And guess what? A lawsuit occurs. So they're suing and, and they sue the bank. They sue the bank who allowed this power of attorney to right. go through. They sue everybody. That's the way a lawsuit works. Sue everybody. Mm-hmm. Everybody who came near it, sue them. Okay. Mm-hmm. Now I gotta ask you a question. Mm-hmm. And by the way, occasionally they lose. Mm-hmm. Like occasionally a judge says, "Well, this is a pretty shitty power of attorney. I don't think the bank did its due diligence. I'm going to restore the money to these other kids who got screwed over." Yeah. Okay. Well, if that happens to a bank once, they're never going to do it again. Mm-hmm. Okay. And that's the truth of all this power of attorney stuff. That's why the bank says no, because even if you have a power of attorney. The bank thinks, look, 
it's just not worth it. Mm-hmm. We don't need any lawsuits. We don't know how many other kids there are hanging out there. You know, you've got power of attorney just to look after the <laughs> basics. We don't think borrowing money on this house is part of that. Right. Okay. Right. So yeah, there can be problems for sure. Mm-hmm. That's how it, that's how it works. Yeah. Okay. Um, my mortgage broker says now is the best time to take a variable rate because it will go down to two point five percent this year. I'm nervous. What should I do? Well, that seems a little. Uh, <laughs> Did you see how I started smiling when I read that one? <laughs> that mortgage broker seems a little aggressive in his thinking Yikes. or her thinking. I don't know. Uh, like, look, here's the truth. You know, you can make a statistical case, balance of probabilities, that mm-hmm. you might be better off with a variable over the next two years, mm-hmm. okay, than taking a, a five year fix. That's yeah. possible. That's a possibility. Yeah. Okay? Um, but to say that. Mortgage worker to say that I know this or I have an extreme belief, like fuck you, mortgage broker. Okay, mm-hmm. like you really don't know for certain, and you sure as shit don't know how fast it's going to come down, and mm-hmm. you don't know how far it's going to come down, and you don't know when it's going to stop. You don't know any of that shit, really. Yeah. Okay, all I talk about is trends. Okay, mm-hmm. I'm not naming names and telling exact amounts and predicting precise mm-hmm. uh, reduction amounts. So, and finally, this. Know this about every variable mortgage. The reason a variable mortgage is called variable Mm -hmm. is because you're taking on the risk when you select a variable rate Mm -hmm. mortgage. The bank just smiles and says, hey, yeah, fine, that's fine. Mm -hmm. Um, Here's our contract. It's variable based on prime. And uh, we're not on any risk. Mm -hmm. We just, if it goes up, we just charge you more. Mm -hmm. And if it goes down, we give you that advantage. Oh, by the way, if it goes down, we're still happy with the money we're making. We're not, you know, we studied this all a lot. Yeah. Okay. Like yeah. a lot. We know we're okay. Yeah. So, and we know the risk is not on us. Exactly. Okay? So it's on you. So that's the consideration. Yes. You could make a case that variable may work out well for some people, mm-hmm. but to make very precise claims of time mm-hmm. and, um, and what the rate's going to be a year from now. Um, Smells like bullshit to me. Okay. It's pretty shady. Yeah, I, I don't agree with that. So, yeah. hey, make do your own due diligence. Decide whether you want variable or not. But I don't listen to people who are giving you dates and times. Exactly. Okay. Um, my real estate agent says to buy out first home, buy our first home now because prices will go way up in the spring. What do you think? Well, once again, we said like I guess this this real estate agent's obviously married to the mortgage broker, okay? <laughs> uh, who's giving because they're giving like exact predictions, they're giving mm-hmm. precise advice, they're all in on what they're saying. There's yeah. no, you know, there's no way hey, this may happen, that may happen, okay? Like at the yeah. end of the day, okay, maybe, okay. There's yeah. a chance of that. I mean, there's also a chance that um, the real estate agent is compensated based on sales okay like i mean you know good chance yeah yeah I, like if, yeah. if uh, it, like i would say go with it as long as the real estate agent signs a contract that if prices um don't go up if prices go down in 18 months mm-hmm. that uh, the real estate agent pays the difference to the buyer okay get an appraisal mm-hmm. pay the difference if it goes yeah. down because let's face it that's what we're talking about Realtor gets paid, and once they're paid, it's they over. Care. By the it's way, bad. I'm not suggesting every. There's there's a lot of realtors who would never ever say this. Mm-hmm. Right? They would not. They would not. But it's just a shady bunch. Eh, shady, desperate, um, poorly informed. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So many possibilities. Yeah. I mean, like at the end of the day, let's face it. <laughs> there's some new realtors. Like who became a realtor just got two their and a half, license. Well, two and a half years ago, let's say, yeah. when it was really hot, when things mm-hmm. were hot. They got their, their real estate license two years ago, three years ago, whatever, two and a half years ago. And things went well for a while, and then they turned to shit. Mm-hmm. Okay, they were shitty times for the last mm-hmm. year. And then they talked, you know, they're wondering whether they should still stay, stay in the business. And, you know, their mentor in the real estate office says, don't worry, let everybody know. Prices are going up in the spring, so they should buy now. Mm-hmm. Like, how does that newbie guy or gal know that the mentor is full of shit? Or, you yeah. know, like, that's the whole story. You, you know, the like, prediction is a crap business. Mm-hmm. I mean, you have to do a certain level of analysis mm-hmm. and give your analysis or you're useless to people. 
but to give firm statements about act this minute mm-hmm. ah look you can decide whether you want to believe that real estate agent or not but mm-hmm. i don't know people it's, who make very super specific statements no yeah. I don't there's think a so. chance that they're just giving you false hope and trying to feed off your vulnerability but and there's a chance they're broke and they need a commission yeah, yeah. there's that chance too yeah <laughs> <laughs> So, so <laughs> yeah, yeah, be warned, folks. Tread lightly. <laughs> yeah, tread fucking lightly on that one. All right. Like, I mean, that, by the way, it's possible. Mm-hmm. It's not impossible mm-hmm. because you know real estate breaks down by province, by city, by neighborhood, by mm-hmm. region, by everything, and it could be. I don't know where those people are. Mm-hmm. Okay, uh, it could be that if you're in a specific spot, like in Alberta or Quebec, which I know. Mm-hmm very very little about those real estate markets Mm -hmm. like i can see the statistics are going down okay Mm -hmm. not as bad you know not alberta so much alberta's probably has had a great run and is probably about neutral right now but Mm -hmm. could and it could alberta could go up Mm -hmm. i mean a lot of people move into alberta so Mm -hmm. again i'm not saying that i know and the other people don't know but you know um just be careful now uh, like when we we got to to my mind, that if you're trying to analyze the future of interest rates and the future of house prices and everything else, one of the things you've got to think about is the general direction of the economy, mm-hmm. right? What do we mean by the economy? Well, you know, there's complicated stuff like GDP, gross domestic product. It's calculated, a bunch of calculations to get there. Mm-hmm. There's things like just unemployment rate, right? Yeah. If the unemployment rate goes up, chances are the economy is not doing well, right? Yeah. So there's all that. There's jo- those jobs numbers. Inflation comes into play, but the Bank of Canada comes into play. Yeah. And they're not doing anything. Oh, I hate you, you son of a bitch. Mm-hmm. So stop doing my job. Stop. You don't know anything about what I'm going to do. <laughs> yes, I do, Tiff. It The rate is not changing. Uh, so lots of things come into play. Mm-hmm. What's going on in the economy? What's the future of the economy? Yeah. And let's face it, for the, the economy for some people never changes. Like if you have a, a job... Um, like your life can change. You could have a health problem. But mm-hmm. for some people who have a job with the government or mm-hmm. other types of jobs, like if you, let's face it, if you're a teacher, mm-hmm. I think if you're, you're a teacher who's got, you know, a full-time contract, mm-hmm. I think you got to show up drunk at school for like 10 straight weeks before you ever even in trouble. Okay. I mean, like, <laughs> I, 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 and I, by the way, I, now I'm going to get a bunch of, <laughs> get a bunch of social media comment. <laughs> oh, you think teachers are drunk, you fat bastard? No, I You think not, we I'm can just, afford to drink? We're underpaid. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to hear a million things yeah. in a minute. Yeah. Like you guys, by the way, we love teachers. Teachers are great, but I'm just mm-hmm. using an example. Yeah. Okay. Like it's easier to lose some jobs than other jobs. Oh, 100%. Right. I yeah, mean, like, 100%. Like, let's say you're working in a small restaurant, owner operated restaurant. I mean, you could use your job easily, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, shit could go wrong. Okay. Exactly. When you're working for a school board and you've been there for 10 years, I think you're probably okay. Oh, right? for sure. So. My sister, my sister's a teacher, funny yeah. enough. And she moved to England because she couldn't get a job here. Jesus. So it's like they, they just wouldn't, re- like, teachers just wouldn't retire. Is she and, still in England? Yeah. She's been there for like seven years now, seven, how eight she, years. How does she like it? She loves it. Really? Yeah, she's in London. Whoa, London's pretty cool, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. 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 It's just by the way, folks, expensive, but... By, but... It's very expensive, right? <laughs> but, but by the way, folks, when uh, everybody who says Toronto's a world-class city, like, I love Toronto, it's fine, but if you've been to London... Yeah. Uh, Toronto's not a world-class city. <laughs> London be a fucking world-class yeah. city, baby. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> like, the that's... culture is so rich oh, there. Man. I love it. Jeez. Yeah. Wow. So much going on in London. <laughs> Holy mackerel. It's like New York. You know, uh, I like it. Some people tell, some people always tell me, you know, I, I think, uh, I think Toronto is uh, just as vibrant and exciting as New York. You're fucking wrong, okay? <laughs> like I've been to New York, it's fucking better, all right? Like that's it. Yeah, there's some problems, but hey, guess what? Anybody who thinks the traffic is worse in New York than traffic in Toronto, please fuck yourself. Okay? <laughs> they do not close half the fucking streets in Manhattan like yeah. they do in fucking Toronto. Okay? And they have a really good train system compared to... The subway is <laughs> only maybe 12 or 15 times better. Okay, yeah. That's 100% true. Yeah. Okay? And by the way, the, tra- the, the, the tube says, they call it a tube in London. Yeah. The tube is better in Toronto. It is better in, than in Toronto London. By, again, 10 yeah. times better, right? Oh, 100%. Like, yeah. 100%. Jesus. Anyway, yeah. so your point was, sorry, I went on my rant yeah, about it's London okay. and Manhattan, but um, 
job like teacher jobs and they, they don't leave right they just don't leave they don't yeah. sort of leave no by the way do you know that do you know, folks out there uh do you know that a teacher in ontario mm-hmm. uh can uh work forever <laughs> there's no limits there's no limits no. <laughs> no limit. you found that out too right yeah no, yeah well no yeah because they're like 70 something 80 something they're oh, no shit holding yeah on. yeah like i we're, <laughs> we're doing an application for a mortgage this guy is in his 80s and then uh, i'm like my one of my people says, "Oh no, he's still working." I said, "What? The <laughs> fuck? He's still working? Yeah, he's a teacher." So what the fuck? He's an eighty-two-year-old teacher. Like, what the fuck can he tell these kids? All right, yeah. what, are, what are you gonna tell a kid if you're eighty-two and you got like a sixteen-year-old in front of you? Yeah, I mean, holy fuck! Like, but it's yeah. it's rough. But I mean, hey, they like you said, there's no limit. No limit, and like. And they're okay. protected. Oh, so. app- apparently, I, I've just got a, I just got a signal. I, I'm looking at a signal on your phone, on your I, uh, iPhone, that uh, yeah, there's already 37 comments about the drunken <laughs> teacher. Okay, like anyway. Fuck. <laughs> so look, I'm just saying, there's some jobs that are harder to lose than others, of and and they're, and they're probably a bit less affected by economic gyrations, mm-hmm. okay, than, yeah. than others. But uh, I think for a lot of people, it's job, it's it's you know. So my point to you is that. Um, one negative effect on an economy, but it's quite gradual, mm-hmm. is the sort of renewal stuff. That's the mortgage renewal stuff that's yeah. been going on in Canada, because I think we've had we are not in the worst of it yet. The biggest uh, renewal years are twenty five and twenty six. But what we've seen is everybody who gets a renewal, mm-hmm. it's way up. Mm-hmm. Okay, it's way up, mm-hmm. and you know even though your payments don't go up, let's say the rate goes from. You had a three point six rate, and it goes to six point two. That's pretty fucking bad. Yeah, okay? uh, it's not double like the the, the interest is, low, but it's it's a big increase. It's like it somewhere is. between twenty eight and forty five percent increase. Mm-hmm. And let's face it, most people are managing it somehow. Mm-hmm. We don't have a big default rate in Canada. The mortgage default rate is still incredibly low in Canada, mm-hmm. but that means that there's a little less money in your pocket, right? Like yeah. just or a lot less money in your pocket. Oh yeah. Yeah. And it's gradual. It's just there's more of these people every week. There's thousands more every week. And sure, people can get raises, yes, but I don't think it keeps up with a 28 percent not payment increase. So. No. So yeah, yeah, that's just less money to spend, mm-hmm. and that's the insidious impact of of higher mortgage rates. Mm-hmm. You know, we went through 12 years, really, maybe more, 13 years, mm-hmm. where from say about 2009 on. Till 2022, mortgage just, just when you got your renewal, it just either went up a little bit or it went down, mm-hmm. or it stayed about the same. Like, mm-hmm. it, and sometimes it went down okay, like not bad. Okay, sometimes yeah. it went from 3.8 to 2.7. I mean, like, mm-hmm. not bad, right? Yeah, yeah, payments are lower, not bad. Mm-hmm. Um, that's all gone, yeah, and that is something that bites into your economy mm-hmm. no matter what you say i know people make oh no people have got raises people do this i don't give a shit if it's you're not mortgage, keeping up not keeping up if mm-hmm. your mortgage payment goes from eighteen hundred dollars to twenty six hundred dollars mm-hmm. fuck me that's mm-hmm. real okay yeah and that's just got i think it's at that moment when it changes that's 800 or less to spend mm-hmm. and maybe you're okay maybe it doesn't kill you but you're going to spend a little bit less on other stuff. Yeah. Okay, so. The home ownership dream just keeps flying further and further mm, away from my generation. Uh, yeah, ain't that the goddamn truth. Mm-hmm. Well, uh, well, actually, that takes us to the favorite part of the program. What the actual fuck? What the actual fuck is with everybody talking about how, you know, young people, it's not as bad as you think. You know, I, I mean, <laughs> because there's a lot of negativity out there i know there is mm-hmm. and and but and so the, then the pushback on it, negativity for young people so what's up what's it, what's up what problems do young people have people between say 25 and 35 um getting their lives started like there's mm-hmm. all kinds of negative things like there's a birth rate that's like going backwards okay mm-hmm. like be, there's gonna be you know people are having so many so few kids that mm-hmm. they could close they could convert that we got crowded emergency rooms empty fucking maternity wards okay so no, maybe that's an exaggeration but <laughs> bottom line is that People are having fewer kids. Mm-hmm. People are getting together less. There's lower family formation. Mm-hmm. Uh, and why? Like, why? Why Why is this this big n- sort of negative malaise amongst young people? Well, I got news for you. I'm old. Like, I'm really fucking old. I'm 66, okay? And, uh, you know, people, 
who are 66 like to prattle on with bullshit. Like, no, it was really hard for me too. Like, I was, uh, interest rates were 18%. Well, fuck you. When the interest rates were 18%, <laughs> you could buy a house for 118 grand for yeah. fuck's sake. I mean, like, <laughs> shut the fuck up. But it's so many fucking things, right? Mm-hmm. Like, I'm going to tell you straight up. When I was you know, university people mm-hmm. uh, 40 years ago, there's no fucking huge student debt. Mm-hmm. There's no fucking big OSAP, big, uh, you know, yeah. you know, the universities, I'm not saying they're free. Yeah. Well, I think all you had to do, I remember, right? People just had to buy their books and shit. Okay. Mm-hmm. There's no, there's no massive student fucking loans. Mm-hmm. Okay. For university that never fucking happened. Okay. Like there was, so you actually, and the house price, well, we've talked about the price of houses, mm-hmm. how ridiculously cheap compared with today. Yeah. And because it's always the same, folks. It's a multiple of fucking income that counts. Mm-hmm. If, if I bought a house for two and a half times my income, and now it's 10 fucking times your income, you can't escape from that ratio. No. Okay. No. That's the truthful fucking ratio. And that is like beyond our control. Totally right? fucking beyond so- your control. <laughs> like absolutely and utterly totally beyond your control. This is why my generation is just not we're not gonna have kids as much as your generation did because we can't afford to we can barely afford to feed ourselves and our two dogs (laughs) you know like things are tough out here for us we're gonna do a show about the dogs (laughs) (laughs) i want to bring my my dogs i call them my kids and then people with kids are like uh Listen, yeah, I got to admit, they are that, my kids. I'm, 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 I just can't get into this fur baby thing. I mean, I just can't do it. But look, no, finish, I got to finish my rant. It's very fucking important. I got to get back to being fucking mad, okay? Get angry. For everybody in their 20s, early 30s, whatever, like, like, let's just, can we just get some common decency going here and have some basic honesty? People are fucked over. We're okay? fucked. And it's, 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 it, it, it's, it's like, it's so obvious. Mm-hmm. It's so clear. Okay, and it, by the way, do you know how how come the the, the politicians get over get her, get away with fucking over these young generation? Because they don't care. You don't vote. You guys don't vote as much as you should. Because okay? we gave up. Well, I do vote, but a lot of people just like don't care because they're like, ah, nothing's gonna change. You know, folks. <laughs> Young people, vote. fucking vote, okay? <laughs> that you find somebody who's going to fucking promise to fix this? Yeah, well, you guys are all liars. Well, pick one, okay? <laughs> Maybe one's not lying, but you got to you gotta vote. For the love of God, vote. Yeah. Vote, get mad, get angry. Don't just get sad. Get fucking mad. They're, they're, if you, seriously, it voting is so important. There's no election yet. I get that, mm-hmm. but still. And you've got a right to be mad. You've got a right to be pissed off because I just see it every fucking day. Every day I see some more fuckery on young people. Hey, we're even bringing young people in from other countries mm-hmm. to as fuck international them over students too. just to fuck them over. Okay? <laughs> like, uh, it's unbelievable yep. that how much people in my generation are perfectly happy because guess who owns these fucking diploma mills, piece of shit, s- strip mall, fucking fake colleges? All this old money. All a bunch of old fucks like me. Okay, <laughs> so yes, young people, if you feel you're being fucked over, you are right. Okay, yes, we don't are. fucking put up with it. You gotta vote. Mm-hmm. You gotta pick us. Take a stand. Pick a person. Vote. Vote near. Vote for a mayor too. Mm-hmm. Holy shit, we got some mayors who are half crazy <laughs> here. So look, take a stand. Fight it. It's real. Get after it. <laughs> Next yeah. week. If you like the pod, well, don't just sit there. Go to YouTube, Apple, Spotify, and all the other ones and like the pod. And don't forget to subscribe so we can keep being angry at mortgages and swearing about mortgages. Angry Mortgage could use your support.